Right, so we already discussed the first part of the chapter, carbohydrates. So we now go to lipids. Sometimes people call lipids fat. Other time they call it oil. Why or when? When lipids is solid, at room temperature, then we call it a fat. When normally it's liquid, at room temperature, so we call it oil. Okay. This is how we classify based on the state, it is solid or liquid. But we can divide lipids into neutral lipid and polar lipids. Neutral lipids is actually three glycerides. Neutral lipids is hydro what? Phobic. They hate water. They are not miscible with water. Polar lipids, normally they have this structure, hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail and then the hydrophilic head. The head is water loving, the tail is water hating. This one normally direct to the water phase and this one is dissolved in the fat phase, in the triglyceride phase. Basically, polar lipids are not soluble in water, also not soluble in fat in triglyceride. They normally go to the interface. For example, if you have an interface of water and oil, then they normally go like this. The head, the love wind water head will direct to the water and the tail dissolve in the oil. Okay. So they normally distribute themselves at the interface of two immiscible phases. One part is dissolved in another phase, another part is dissolved in this phase. That is why we call this kind of components surface active material. SAM is a nice name for a boy. Okay? Surface active material. Or you have a specific name, Eman Sifire. We discussed somewhere before, right, in chapter 2. Right, just an introduction about lipids. Normally, there is a lot of neutral lipids. In reality, in real life, there is much more neutral lipid compared to polar lipids. Polar lipids have biological function. They have structural function. They form the structure of cells, for example. Because they normally stay at the border between two phases. So they normally form the cell membrane. They form the cell membrane in our body, in our cells, and so on. So they have structural function. And because they occur normally at low concentration in real life, so we normally have deficiency of these components. We have more than enough triglyceride, but we normally lack polar lipids. Okay. If we go to the right side, what do we see? Fat is solid at room temperature. Normally, it comes from the lipid of animals on land. The animal that live on the land at higher temperature. Oil normally come from plant material, also fish, seafood, especially the seafood that live in low weather condition. For example, the fish would live in the sea at low temperature, then normally the lipids is more liquid, then this means more unsaturated, and this one is more saturated. Saturated lipids 
do not have double bond. Unsaturated liquid have double bond or more double bonds. In terms of nutrition, everything that occurs in life is good, with a good purpose. However, because we already abuse this, we already have too much and it's become negative. So now what do we need to do? We replace this saturated fat by oil, by unsaturated fat in our diet. Then it would be better. Because now we have too much saturated or solid fat, then we have a high risk of cardiovascular diseases. Now we go into the content of this part. Nearly all of the fat in meal is in the fat globules. We discussed already the fat globules in meal. Uh, the fat globules range from 0 0.1 to 15 micrometer, and the fat globule has a core inside and a membrane outside, which is called MFGM, if you remember. Meal fat globule membrane. And nearly all of the fat in meal is there in this in these fat globules. The triglyceride or T glycerol, the same name then T glycerol or T glyceride the same, make up over ninety eight percent of total milk lipids. The remaining is small but doesn't mean that doesn't apply that they are not important. Even they become more important. What occur at low concentrations in reality, then we normally lack, we normally have deficiency. Then they become more important. For example, minerals, for example, vitamins, polylipids, two components, actually we normally have deficiency because they don't occur a lot. And they normally are sensitive to heating, sensitive to processing, and so on. Okay, the polar lipids distribute on the membrane, MFGM. The neutral lipids form the major fraction and stay in the core. Polar lipids form a small fraction, but they have important structural function. They are the main structure of the cell membrane of our cells, also the membrane of MFGM, exactly. Okay, so we look at lipid classes of fresh milk. What are groups of lipids in milk? What do we have? Neutral glyceride, neutral lipids, 98.7%. In which triglyceride occupy 98.3 already. And then we have little amount of diglyceride and monoglyceride. What is triglyceride? Triglyceride, we will see later, that consists of a glycerol and three fatty acids. If one fatty acid is hydrolyzed, it removed, then we have deglyceride. If the other one is also removed, then we have monoglyceride. So these also occur in milk, however, at very low quantities. And because there are deglyceride, there are monoglyceride, so there is some amount of free fatty acid. These fatty acid, when they go out, they become free fatty acid, also small. And then all the here, we can call them polar lipid. We'll talk in a while. We just keep here. Sterone of milk is actually cholesterol. Cholesterol in milk occur in the MFGM. So means that cholesterol has also a structural function also form the structure. So you should not be afraid of cholesterol because nowadays we talk a lot about negative 
impact of cholesterol, but we do need cholesterol because cholesterol forms the cells. Because cholesterol forms some hormone for ladies, for example. Okay? It's only become problem because we abuse, we have too much. Right. And then, of course, vitamins which are soluble in fat can be classified into the lipid groups. They have lipid characteristics. Okay. Triacylglycerols or triglyceride. The structure, the basic structure is one glycerol and three fatty acids. They can draw this to this side or can they draw to this side? No problem. It's just an illustration. I, I have an exam question here. Three glycerol is formed by dog, 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 three glycerol and there fatty acids. You have to put there one glycerol and three fatty acids, for example. Very simple. We just go very fast through triglyceride and D and mono. I already explained how we have D and mono. One or two fatty acids are hydrolytes, and then we have D or mono. We have some free polar lipids. Again, polar lipids occur at small or large quantity in milk fat very small compared to neutral fat or larger compared to neutral fat very small okay they are strongly amphipolar amphipolar or amphiphilic mean two different property to end what we already saw they are basically insoluble in water as well as in oil they just orient themselves distribute themselves at the interface so they are highly surface active and they form typical B layer that are the basic structure of cellular membranes, membrane of the cells. This is the cell, our cell. Inside the cell is aqueous, it's a lot of water. Outside of the cell, it's also aqueous, a lot of water. So the polar lipid will stay like this. That's how polar lipid, how polar lipid form a B layer at the membrane of the cell. Because outside there's water, so the hydrophilic head orient outside. Hydrophilic head orient inside because the inside environment of the cell is also aqueous. So the two hydrophobic cell nights just orient like that, and then you have this is very typical B layer of cell membrane. Okay, and then polar lipids um, are mainly present in MFGM, in the membrane of fat globules, and in lipoprotein particles as well. What is the origin of lipoprotein particles again? Where do they come from? Uh, yes, they are the broken pieces, the tiny broken pieces of the membrane of secretory cells. Because the membrane contains polar lipids. So that is why lipoprotein particles also contain polar lipids. Okay, now we talk a little bit about polar lipids of milk lipids. Polylipids can be classified into two groups, phospholipids and sphingolipids. What is phospholipids? You have the same a glycerol. This is a glycerol. The first hydrocyne group, the second hydrocyne group are linked to, free, to fatty acid 1, fatty acid 2. But the third hydrocyne group is now not esterified with fatty acid, but with a phosphate group, and then link here to an X residue. That is why we have the name phospholipids, contain phosphate, phosphor here, and phosphate group. This X can be, can be this group, can be this, can be this, can be this, can be simply H, 
hydrogen. If the arc is a hydrogen, then the name is phosphatidic acid. If the arc is like this, then phosphatidic choline. This is actually a functional component in the liver. When the people take some medicine which uh, impact negatively to the liver, they need to, to take this photolipid to recover the liver. Photolipidine ethanol amine, photolipidine inositol, photolipidine serine. This one is now confirmed to have a function in the brain. For example, for the old people, they may lose the memory, they have Alzheimer's and so on. Then when they take PH for fatty serine, they can improve somehow the recognition, the perception. Okay, what do I mean is polylipids occur at low concentration, but normally we don't have enough. And then they play important roles in our body. When you see phosphatidine, 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 then that's actually what? Phospholipids. You don't need to remember all names, but you need to memorize a little bit. For example, I put in the exam, phosphatidine colon is A, a carbohydrate, B, a neutral lipid, C, a polylipid, D, I don't know. Then you can select which one is the most correct. Okay, if you see phosphatidine, then it's a phospholipid. Now we have another group in polylipids, sphingolipid. Normally, phospholipid occupies 70% of the polylipid fraction, and this one, 30% of the polylipid fraction. Together, both of these occupy only more or less 1% of total lipid in milk, eh? not, not milk. Okay? And then 1% of total lipid, and total lipid is 4% of milk. Milk contains cow milk, eh? contains 4% of fat. In this fat, 1% is polar lipid. In this polar lipid, 70% is phospholipids. If you look at the number 70, you may imagine that it's high, but it's not high. Okay? Sphingolipid, again, 30% of total polylipids. Sphingosine and ceramide. Ceramide is like this, sphingosine. This is sphingomelin. This is also a very well-known component in polylipids. It's well known doesn't mean that it occurs at high concentration, but it is important for health. Actually, all these components occur at higher concentration in human milk than in cow milk. Human milk have more than MFGM components compared to cow milk. He, uh, glucosine ceramide, lactosine ceramide, glucosine means a glucose. This is a glucose. This is a lactose. At linked to a fat. You see, fat linked to carbohydrate. It's a string component. This is why it occurred a very small compon uh, concentration. Okay, right. Polylipids are actually good for the brain function, for the brain development. You know that the signal from our brain, which is transferred to other organs, is by polylipid molecules. And in our, in our brain, there's a lot of lipids inside. A lot of cells with polylipids make a complicated network inside. Okay. Then we go to the next slide. Cholesterol. There's a group called unsaponifiable lipids, and the important one is cholesterol. Cholesterol is good and not good again. Good. Everything is good, actually. Everything happens in life with a good purpose just because we do not know how to use it good. Even now, we abuse already, but now they can still divide a bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. The bad cholesterol have low or high density, low density, and the one have high density than the good one. 
in this group there's also other like vitamin this is a pro vitamin a we have vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e these are soluble in lipids and then they can be classified into lipid group here there's one thing you need to memorize beta carotene is a component which is responsible for the yellow color of milk fat milk fat has a yellow color because beta carotene our milk is yellowish because the fat lobules are yellowish the fat is yellowish because of beta carotene remember in the exam very simple when we talk about lipids are we talk about fat in the past, they talk about the amount. How much fat do we take in our body? That's in the past. But nowadays, it's more important to know what kind of fat that we intake into our body. So what kind of fat or what kind of triglyceride then is determined by the, the what? The fatty acids. So now we talk about fatty acid composition FAC forever alone community there is a community like that in Vietnam forever alone if you want to join just a kid in any way but FAC is fatty acid composition because three glyceride had the same basic structure one glycerol and three fatty acids so this is the same for all three glyceride, but they are different in the composition of fatty acid. Now, it's become more important than the total amount of fat. In the past, when people did not have enough food to eat, they need energy. So it was okay to eat, like for example, pork fat. They eat pork fat to have enough energy to work. But nowadays, we already have too much fat from animal, and then it looks so scary. Like 70 years ago, even in America, there was some advertisement like, eat one piece of pork fat, you can work whole day in the mine. Ăn một chút xíu cục béo, mở lợn, làm việc cả ngày ở trong cái hầm mỏ. Dư năng lượng, đúng không? Lúc đó cần năng lượng. But nowadays, then it looks so scary to eat fat. Okay, so when we talk about FAC, what do we see? Saturated fatty acid occupy 90%, uh, sorry, 70%. Saturated fatty acids mean the one without double bond. Mono N means the one with one double bond. Occupies how many percent? 27 percent of total fatty acids. DN means two double bonds, then 2.5 percent. And then poly N means more than two, quite small amount, less than one percent, around one percent. Steric acid has 18 carbon atom how many double bond no double bond what is the same what is an acid which have the same number of carbon but with one double bond oleic oleic also has 18 carbon atom but one double bond linoleic the same number of carbon atom but two double bond Three double bond, 18C, linolenic. So they have different number of double bonds. They have different names. Stearic, oleic, linoleic, linolenic. If you can remember. This, I think you already um, saw this in food chemistry. Good. So... These are the characteristics of FAC in milk fat. 
Milk fat has a very wide composition of fatty acids, mean many types of fatty acids. The second characteristic, milk contains a relatively high proportion of short-chain fatty acids, from 4 to 10 carbon atoms, called short-chain fatty acids. Short-chain fatty acids have lower melting point than long-chain fatty acids. And then, the third characteristic, saturated fatty acids residue occupy 70% on mole, 63% on weight. Just remember 70%. And uh, the other characteristic, in the unsaturated fatty acid residue, the oleic is the main one. Oleic, how many C? 18. How many number of double bonds? One. So this is the main unsaturated fatty acid of milk fat. 70% of total unsaturated. Okay. Characteristics 5. There are all the unsaturated fatty acid residue as well, but they occur at smaller quantity, but they are quite complicated in number, position, configuration of the bonds. And then, six, this we already discussed, milk have a varying content of fat. Fat content kind of varies in milk. But also, the fatty acid composition also varies in milk, depending on many factors. Depending on the feed that the cow eat, the fatty acid composition is somehow changed. So nowadays, they, fat, they feed the cow with unsaturated lipid so that the milk fat will, be, will have higher unsaturated fat and they sell this milk for a higher price. Because nowadays we are afraid of saturated fat already. So we can just feed to the cow more unsaturated lipids like oil, like anchi oil, like fish oil. Then the milk from the cow will have higher ratio of unsaturated fats. Then they believe that it's better for health nowadays. And the last characteristic, if you look at distribution of fatty acids among three positions of glycerol, you have a glycerol which have three hydrocin, hydrocin one, two, three. Okay. And then these are the fatty acids in milk fat. If you look at the distribution, you see that, for example, C6 only, uh, no, uh, distributes mainly at position 3. If you look at, for example, oleic, then distribute a lot in position 1, less in 2, and a little bit higher in 3. And this one, look, you don't need to learn by heart which fatty acids is distributed at which position. You only need to remember that the distribution of fatty acids among the three positions of glycerol is not a random. It's not randomized, but there is a pattern of distribution. Okay? Everything in life occurs at a certain pattern, a certain order. It's not a randomization. This table will tell us the fat in milk products, the total lipid content in milk products, what do we see? Normal meal, whole meal has 4% of fat, total fat. Separated milk, what is separated milk? Skim milk. We will study this in chapter 6. When we remove fat globules from the milk, we will obtain separated milk. Milk which has been separated from the fat globules. However, you cannot remove 100% of fat. That is why skim milk or separated milk still has some amount, 
0.06%. Okay. Cream. Cream products have higher fat content. Because cream is a fraction of high fat globule. You take the fat globule out, you have more fat, so you obtain cream. And then depending on the product, you may have or 10, 20, or 40. Butter, for example. Butter has around 82% of milk fat. Anhydrous milk fat, AMF. Anhydrous milk fat contains uh, almost 100% of fat. So fat without water, that's called anhydrous. We look at the total fat, but it's more interesting to look at the what? The photolipids, the polylipids, more important. Because nowadays, we have more than enough neutral fat already, so we better look at this one. All of these have more or less some polylipids, but AMF has no polylipids, right? So, why it has no polylipid? In milk, neutral fat, triglyceride distribute in the core. Polylipids distribute in the MFGM. And then when they make AMF, they only take the part inside. They remove everything outside. That's why AMF has no Polylipid. So it's more stable when you want to store it. It's easy for application in food, but in terms of nutrition, it's negative. Okay? Not negative, but it doesn't contain the good ones that we need to have. Good? Right. Now, because we talk about lipids, we talk about fat, so we should know a little bit about melting points or melting drains of milk fat. In fat, they normally use the term melting range instead of melting point. Why? Because fat is a mixture of many, many what? Many triglyceride molecules. One molecule of triglyceride has a melting point. For example, 30 degrees C it will melt from liquid into, sorry, from solid into liquid. But then because a fat has so many molecules, each molecule has a melting point. So a fat has a melting range. Good? And the melting range of fat mixtures is influenced by what? the length of the chain of fatty acid. If the fatty acid is long, the normally is had higher melting point. In terms of nutrition, higher or lower melting point will be better again? Lower melting point will be better. Because means that it is already melted at room temperature, means that it is already liquid. It's already melted in our body temperature, so when we take into our body, it's liquid. It will not deposit on the blood wall, for example. Okay. The melting range also is influenced by the unsaturation degree. More double bone you have, lower the what? melting point. Higher the unsaturation degree, lower the melting point. We discussed this many times already. And then, also influenced by the place of the double bone. The double bone can be at position 3, can be at position 6, can be at position 9. Different position, then different configuration. How the fatty acids can, like, um, stack together. If they stack together very well, then the melting point is high. If they cannot stack well together, then the melting point is low. It's normally for fat. And then, the also influence, the melting range is also influenced by the presence of trans isomers. If you have a double bone, then you have two types of isomers, the sick and the 
the trans. Six is like this. This is six. A C and a C here, and the hydrogen here. This is six, and this is trans. Okay, trans. Then the heavier part. This side, the heavy part. This side of the double bond. Six. Then the heavier part will be at the same side. So this is trans, and this is six. Which one have higher melting point? Do you think? Trans of cis? Why? Why trans isomer have higher melting point? Okay. If you look at the chain of fatty acids, the cis is like this, bend a little bit, right? The trans is kind of straight. When the fatty acids are straight, they can stack together strongly, more stable, easily. So the melting point is higher. Only if, for example, the sick and the trans can be 20 degrees C difference in melting point. Very much different if it's either sick or trans. Okay, and also is influenced by the fatty acid distribution within the triglycerides. Either distribution of fatty acid in milk fats a random or not a random. Not a random. It's follow some pattern, certain pattern for different kind of lipid, different kind of fat, different kind of patterns. Okay. Not only the composition, but the pattern is also not the same. Okay. Now this figure is very nice when we talk about melting drains. What is melting again? Melting is a process that converts from what state? Solid to liquid. How do you call it? Backward, how do you call it? If it's go backward from liquid to solid, how do you call it? Huh? Crystallization. Okay. This curve, the solid curve in the middle, represent the melting range of milk fat. At 5 degrees C, uh, the temperature at 5 degrees C, 55% of milk fat is what? Solid. So this axis represents solid fat content. Means that 45% is still liquid. At 5 degrees C, 55% of the fat inside milk fat is solid. But still, pork is already melted, already liquid. Okay. Butter, you know butter? Normally, you buy it from a fridge. They sell in a fridge, you put in a fridge. Does it look liquid or solid? Solid. But is that very solid, very hard or quite not so hard? Not so hard. You can use a knife or a spoon to scrap it, to spread it. Why? Because part of the fat is still liquid inside. It's not very hard. And also, butter contains some air cells that we will discuss in chapter 7. Some air cells as well. Okay, now, for example, at 20 degrees C, when you heat the fat to 20 degrees C, 80% of the fat is already melted into liquid. Still, 20% is solid. Means that 20% of milk fats have higher, the melting point, have a melting point of higher than 20 degrees C. You get it? Okay. Now, people apply we call it fractionation technology in fat industry. There is a technology called fractionation, la fang duang. They can fraction here, here the term. They can fractionate milk fat into two fractions. See, they can separate it into two fractions. How do they separate? They just maintain it at a certain temperature, and they do centrifuge. 
the solid one they take another part the liquid one take it out okay the part with have low melting rate is called only in the fraction which have higher melting rate is called uh, sorry stirring okay what names do they use to for the name of fraction here they based on the name of steric acid and oleic acid though two acids have the same number of carbon atom just one just with or without double bond and very much different in melting point i think if we look back the table we see the melting point here melting point of steric 70 degree c melting point of oleic 16 degree c only one difference in one double bond you see very much lower melting point okay so they use the name of fatty acids to name for the two fraction only in and staring why i need to impress here because i have an exam question to have to look in detail eh? only in is not the same with only it remember okay now this these are actually very popular in market in fat market normally if you see like palm oil when you buy palm oil then you buy the whole lipids of palm but you will see that quite often they sell you palm staring staring what does that mean when you compare palm oil and palm staring palm staring means the fraction of higher melting grain than palm oil when you want to apply it in some food which need the solid structure which need kind of crunchy texture then you need solid fat good now for example only in have lower melting range so at the same temperature less content of solid fat inside i have a question here why do they need to do fractionation why do we have to do that so we have different product of different what melting range for different application if you want to make salad seasoning what fraction do you can do only in a stirring only in it should be liquid so you can spread on your vegetable but when you want to make for example cookie biscuit then normally you use the high melting rain fraction the stirring because you want a good texture when you bite it make a snap it's made a good sound good now this figure is also amazing you already know that an image or a photo say a thousand words an image say a thousand words if an image is good it say a lot no? you don't need to read a lot of text so now we analyze this image to see what they say right this is the same this is just actually the melting drain curve okay on the left side you see solid fat content and the axis here horizontal axis you have temperature where is milk fat milk fat is here they draw only from 20 degrees c palm oil palm oil is a plant oil generally lipids from plant is more unsaturated than lipids from animal however this is not the same thing even from palm but it's very saturated very hard you compare with milk fat okay and here cocoa bean butter the fat in cocoa bean this fat is very important to generate the texture of what chocolate when you eat chocolate you eat the textures of cocoa bean butter butter here is just a fat but they just use that name for cocoa fat 
because it's so hard. Okay, what do you see? At 20 degrees C, the cocoa fat, the cocoa butter is very solid or very liquid? Very solid. Meaning it's very hard. Now, at 35 degrees C, very little amount of fat is eh? solid. Then means that it is already melted. Then it's soft or hard? Soft. In Europe, the weather condition is around 20 degrees C. When they sell chocolate on the market, the chocolate is hard. It's kind of um, crispy. When you bite, you have a snap. They call it snap. A sow. It breaks like a sow. A texture is very nice when you bite. It's called a snap. But then when you choose, the temperature of your mouth is 37 degrees C. You only need to chew two times and then it gets melted very fast. It is melted very fast in your mouth. What does that mean? It's convert from solid into liquid. This process is endothermic or exothermic? Endothermic. Then this process needs energy, absorb energy to melt. It takes energy from your, your mouth. Then what do you feel? You feel cool or you feel hot? Cool. So when you eat chocolate, you have cooling effect in your mouth. This is one of the reasons that chocolate represents for love. When you eat chocolate, you eat the coolness of love. Okay. Try to imagine today, buy chocolate, bite and chew and you can feel. But you have to buy real chocolate, virgin chocolate for example. Chocolate with fat from cocoa bean, not fat from other sources. Then you will really see it. It's very difficult to sell chocolate from European countries in Vietnam. Why? Because the weather in Vietnam, the temperature can be 30 degrees C already. And then, not so high percentage of fat is solid and it's kind of melted apart and it's not hot anymore. So real chocolate, if you want to sell in Vietnam, you have to maintain at the right temperature. Good. Now, it kind of similar like Kobe beef, you remember? Kobe beef, that when you eat it, the fat also get melted in your mouth and you have cooling effect. Okay, now, you look at soy your oil. Why soy yo has much higher melting rate compared to milk fat? Huh? This is not normal soy yo oil. This is what? Hydrogenated soy yo oil. Soy yo oil is normally liquid at room temperature, but they do hydrogenation. Means that the double bone, they add hydrogen, add hydrogen to make it become a single bone to make it saturated chemically. They use a chemical reaction with a catalyzed at high temperature to do this. And then you obtain, actually the commercial name is shortening. In the past, nowadays shortening is very popular, but even in the past, a lot of instant noodle, you know instant noodle, very popular in Vietnam, Instant noodle during processing, they are fried with shortening. Why they don't fry with normal oil? Because if they fry instant noodle with normal oil, then at room temperature, it is liquid, and then the noodle looks so like greasy, looks so soft. But you see the instant noodle, it's quite a creepy. Even you bite, you feel good feeling. So that I have to fry with highly saturated fat and that is healthy or not healthy it's not very healthy your father may tell you every day do not eat a lot of instant noodle my beloved girl or boy because that's very hot food they don't know what is hot or what is not hot okay 
but because when you eat that, you eat a lot of saturated fat, and especially chemically saturated, it's not good. So nowadays, they will replace chemically shortening by kind of natural shortening, like they do fractionation. Fractionation is a physical process. They just use temperature to separate based on melting point. Then it's still safer. Because if you do chemical reaction, then you already intervene this by chemical. This is not natural anymore. And there is a risk here because when they do like this, there is a chance, actually not a chance, it is confirmed already that part of the double bond will become the trans isomer. And this is confirmed that it's caused, it's increased the risk of cancer. Cancinogenic compound in chemically shortening. That is the reason why nowadays in the market you see that a number of companies make kind of non fry instant noodle because they know the negative effect of fried instant noodle. So they advertise or they make it non fry However, the taste factor is not as good as the fried one. Okay. When this curve is so steep, means that it gets melted fast when you increase the temperature. If at 37 degrees C, still a lot of solid, then you don't feel very good when you chew. You have to chew so many times for it to get melted or it doesn't get melted, so it's quite difficult to swallow. Like you eat the wax and so on. You eat the um, honeybee wax. You know the honeybee wax? You chew it and you feel like that. We take a break.